I lived in Gilroy for about a year because I pretty much I lived in Fremont before and then I had a split and then I moved down to Gilroy. I signed the lease, the papers in December and I actually didn't live here for that whole month. But uh, technically I've been in Gilroy for a year and it's been pretty cool. It's a small town. If uh, I need to do business up north, then I just drive to that area. I normally don't drive um, past like Fremont or Mountain View if I'm on that side of the bay. Maybe I've been to San Francisco like a couple years ago. I don't remember the last time I've been up there. I'm not a city person either. And I grew up in uh, upstate New York. It's a small city, small town, small town boy. But I was telling my mother that if she visits, then I could spoil her and, and I could take her to, you know, all the different restaurants. And then I could take her to like the temples and she's interested in like bookstores because she's she's into like reading Chinese books, Vietnamese books, speaking different languages. And I, I, I tried to go on Audible and YouTube and. And I was like, yo, they got Chinese books on YouTube and Audible. And then she said, oh, I read them already. And then <laughs> I was like, okay. But it, it's a different way of, of how to consume your content. And for sure, uh, Audible is pretty instrumental in self-development. And you can listen to an audiobook when you're in the car, when you're dropping the deuce, when you're walking around, whatever, when you're cooking. And obviously, it's better if you read it. And you listen to it at the same time, but you need to be stationary in one area and versus on the go. But for sure, I, I definitely noticed that I got more out of reading when I was actually looking at a book and also listening to it. It, it kind of reminds me of school. You remember school, right? Where um, they, they had like the, the audio book tapes and then we would just follow along in our little books. Like, well, when I was a kid, I never liked reading, and I was always a level behind. I repeated the first grade, and I just wasn't in a learning mode, but I feel like now now I am. But it depends what kind of books you're reading, though, because if you're reading about things that aren't necessarily going to help you, then I probably won't care about it. But if, if, I'm, if I'm reading about certain books... For example, this morning I was listening to The Cancer Code, written by Jason Fung. He's a nephrologist, and he was talking about how cancer forms. And it's interesting because everybody has some forms of cancer in their body, and it's whether or not your body's strong enough to fight it off. And pretty much you, you have your, uh, your, your genes and your chromosomes, and they have caps on them. And each time a cell gets duplicated, reproduced, the, the, there's less and less and less. It gets shorter. And then one, once it gets too short and it can't duplicate anymore, it, uh, it dies. And they call that apoptosis. Um, it's interesting how cancer cells, they don't need, or they don't use air to, uh, to gain energy. Versus like our other cells, they could use air, they could use glucose. And maybe other forms that I don't know of. But as we age older, that we're, we're more prone to, to cancers and, and getting like old diseases. And, and I noticed that my mother, she has like um, tremors. And I wonder if it's because of her genetics or is it because of her mental state? Is it because of her physical environment and for sure uh, she went through a lot my parents went through a lot with the Vietnam War and even if they say that it doesn't affect them that I would disagree in my opinion because they, they show a lot of traits that, that show that that shows that it did affect them and I feel like I inherited them whether it was physical mental or genetic that um, I, I would more, be more willing to, to try and get rid of these problems so that I don't carry them into my future. And for sure, I definitely wouldn't want to pass these problems on to a kid. And maybe if I had a kid, some people say you can learn 
if you have kids, but I would rather not do that because the stakes are high for me. That uh, I just wouldn't want to have a kid and and to pass these problems on to them because I I'm, I know how much I suffered and and I could see my brothers they suffer too. And in in my opinion, that uh, I would be selfish to to have kids. If first of all I didn't want them, I wasn't ready, and maybe I wouldn't be a good parent. Maybe I would, but it's kind of like taking care of a pet. Where if you gave, if my brother gave me his cats and dogs, and then my nieces gave me the fish, that I would take care of them. But when they come back from vacation, I could just give them back, and then it is what it is, right? Because I don't necessarily want to spend my time walking a dog, picking up poop, or the fish are low maintenance. I just have to change the tank once a month and then I rinse the filter out every couple days. I bought an automatic fish feeder. I might buy them a bigger tank. And my company had an all hands meeting. It was mandatory. And they said that uh, most likely we will be going back in March. So I'm most likely going to contact uh, one of my friends. And then he has property in Sunnyvale. So I would have to move to that area because for sure I'm definitely not going to want to commute from Gilroy all the way to Palo Alto. So the, the headquarters is being moved to Palo Alto. I used to work in Palo Alto and it's pretty nice there. It's expensive. But it, it would be a direct commute too if, uh, if I was in like Sunnyvale. And then I had to work in Palo Alto, but maybe I could take the train or maybe I could run there or walk. We'll see. But um, I remember when, when I used to work in Palo Alto that I will go to work maybe 90 minutes to two hours early. And then I would just get a workout in. I would walk around. I would have my backpack with, uh, and I would load it up with extra stuff so that it was heavier. And then I would just go to the park. And then I would do like calisthenics or sometimes they had like tables and chairs and then I would just pick up a chair or a table and they're pretty heavy actually. Uh, I could just do like curls, presses, squats, stuff like that. Um, I was in pretty good shape uh, during that time. But it's interesting how if you think about time, you only get a certain amount of time. And once it's gone, it's gone. You never get it back. And I was I was watching a YouTube video, and he, the one of the Stoics was saying that I shouldn't look into the future and say, "Oh, you know, I probably have forty more years. Nothing's guaranteed. I could tomorrow's not promised. I could die any day." And I was asking my friends that, "Oh, would you be happy if, if you passed away with what you have accomplished in life?" And they didn't necessarily answer the question, but I, I would say that I would be happy with what I accomplished with the time given. And obviously, I I could have optimized it a little better, but things happen for a reason. And to, to look back and speculate or regret certain things that you did in your life, it's not really proper. And I was saying that things in your life happen for a reason, and sometimes... You would have to be in a certain situation. For example, when you're a kid, you can't move out on your own. You, you have to stay with your parents, essentially, until a certain time. And then once you start working, and then you could dip out and do what you got to do. But also for, like, if you were single, um, some people are like, yeah, you, you, should go, you should go date other people. But it's not about dating other people because if, if you need to work on yourself, then you should work on yourself first. And then when you're ready, then you can... You would have the capacity to deal with other people because if you want to do self-improvement on yourself, it would take time. It would take like six months to a year, maybe more, depending on the damage. And it's all of these little steps that you have to do that they would take time to do. For example, if I had to meditate for um, 80 minutes, 70 minutes a day in the morning, that that's time consuming. And I would have to wake up early to be able to do that. If I wanted to whiten my teeth, like that takes like, you know, 20 minutes to do. Um, 
You you just have to shuffle things and I make sure that they're in the right order. 